This video is going to be a little different. I wanted to have a conversation about cost of living. Now, a lot of people don't realize how much drivers make or don't make, yet we're considered independent contractors with our own business. And many business owners out there know if you're running your own business, you need profits in order to live on. Because if you're not making a living, I mean, you're not going to be able to afford the cost of living. Uber and Lyft, they always talking about, well, we need to know what driver's expenses are. Many of my, you know, videos, you will hear me talk, even on my live streams, I'm always talking about, well, if they want to know how our expenses are, just talk to somebody in the cubicle. Just walk up, hey, hey, Brittany, how much is your cost of living? You know what? And that's a driver because we all living in the same cities. We all doing the same thing, just trying to make a living. So if you're trying to put us at an employee rate, but yet got us doing independent contractor things like paying for our own car, paying for our own car insurance, full coverage, paying for our own fuel, our own repairs, that adds to our cost of living when we beating these cars up. Now I got videos about to drop right after this kind of showing you what it costs to live in Phoenix. Not only that, I got another one saying what it costs to live in Minneapolis. Now there's different like levels because some people say, you know what, it only, you know, is good at thirty thousand dollars. I'm good. Forty seven thousand, ninety thousand. I mean, you'll see different levels. So you got to say, hey, my cost of living needs to be on my level. Everybody not going to live like a millionaire. Tell you that right off the bat. But with these videos, it'll kind of show you approximately where you need to be to live comfortably. Like somebody that owns a business, not somebody on the bottom scraping to get by, but comfortably with somebody who needs to generate savings, needs to generate profits. This is what this video is about. Inflation, it continues to impact families and people living off of one income. A new study reveals just how much you have to make to live comfortably in Arizona. In most Valley cities, it's more than six figures. Fox 10's Lindsay Regas has reaction from Arizonans. I got a lot of laughs when I told people the salary was over $102,000, and here's why. I believe minimum wage is at least $15 an hour right now, and that's... At the end of the year, that's not going to equal up to 100000 Not, Not a year. So people get a lot of side jobs or something, but it is hard. According to a new study by Smart Asset, to live comfortably in Phoenix, Mesa, Chandler, and Scottsdale, the salary needed is $102,710. In Gilbert and Glendale, it's even more, $102,752, or more than $49 per hour. The nationwide average is around $96,000. Now, it's funny that they say you need around $49 an hour. How many of my videos have I said I need at least $40, $50 an hour? Because I want to live comfortably. I'm a business owner. I'm out here driving through these streets. I'm beating my vehicles up. I want to at least come home with some groceries, you know, make enough money to pay for food around here, keep the lights turned on, pay for my mortgage. If I ain't making $40, $50 an hour, I mean, what's the point? I'm going in a hole. I can't live off of $15 an hour like these fools in Minnesota is asking for. I can't do that. Not, not to mean to call them fools, but I'm just saying. I mean, that's pigeon pay. Real shit, that's pigeon pay. I'm not asking for no $15 an hour. If you're a business owner, you want to live comfortably. You're putting a lot of risk on yourself out in these streets. And these people are telling you, you're not even worth $15 an hour. That uh, probably sounds about right. This is based on the 50-30-20 budget rule, allocating 50% of your salary to your needs, 30% to your wants, and 20% towards savings or debt. I mean, it's way over the median income, so it's, you know, it's depressing to hear because it, as the uh, cost of living goes up, it will make it harder for people to pre prepare for retirement. But um, I'm not surprised based off of uh, just the direction of national debts and deficits and inflation. Now, what this guy's talking about is actual benefits like retirement, things like that, the cost of living, health insurance and all that going on. We don't even get that from these apps. We basically operating at a gross revenue for every time we drive in these streets. We still got to look at wear and tear in our car, the tires, the brakes, you know, the motor mounts. We're looking at everything tearing up. We need to make fuel, window regulators. We're talking about expenses to run a business, and that's all we're covering if you're making $15 an hour, $20 an hour. Because at some point, something on your car is going to break, and it's going to cost you $1,500. It's going to cost you $5,000 for a new engine. Something's going to break, and if you haven't generated the profits to fix that, now you got a busted car in your driveway. Now you got to call Hertz. you got to call Avis. These companies that have you right where they want you. This is why I say, if you want to make it in today's world, you got to be pushing 40, 45, 50 dollars an hour. Because if you're not cherry picking, if you're not doing private rides here and there, you don't have your own set of clients out there, you're not going to make it in today's economy. It's just not happening.
Many are having to find ways to save money where they can. I'd say I'm making about anywhere between 50 and 60 right now. I work from home. I make about $58,000 a year. Really lucky. Like, I've been able to find rent that is under what the average rent is. I pay under $1,000 in rent. Um, that is not the case for people that I know, other single people in the city. We had an inflation shock there for a while where it was double digit um, inflation numbers, which we hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, right now it's down into the th three, four percent range. So that's much more acceptable. Uh, but I, if my analysis is right, I think inflation is going to be higher than that 2% that we experienced for the last 20 years. So unfortunately, I think this is going to be something that we're going to have to deal with uh, for the foreseeable future. So if leading economists and finance guys are saying they just see things getting worse, you got to be smarter with how you're out there driving. You can't be a pigeon. You can't be thinking, well, one day they're going to start giving us better bonuses. Life is going to catch up to you. These guys are experts saying it's only going to get worse for people. Rents are going to keep going up. Prices are going to keep going up in groceries and food. Shortage is going to happen left and right. If you're not sitting on savings somehow, you're not sitting on some YouTube channel that's telling you how to save money, where to save money, you're going down the wrong path. If you're out here beating up your car, doing 2,000 miles a week, you're not going to do it right. That means you got to do it smarter because you're going to beat that car up that you owe money on. You're not going to be able to sit there and afford the repair now because you've been doing pigeon rides the whole time. This is not letting up. All of what's going on with inflation and recessions, this is not going to let up. You got to be smarter. You got to separate yourself from the normal thought pattern of people out there and say, I need to do something differently than what everybody else is doing. I need to not go out and club, maybe. I need to drive a little smarter, maybe. I need to have a little side business. I need to start padding for my own personal future, start relying on these apps, maybe. You got to do something different because this ain't going to end anytime soon. The survey also found that a family of two working adults with two children would need more than $238,000 to live comfortably. Reporting in Phoenix, Lindsay Regis, Fox 10 News. That was just Arizona. Now, Minneapolis is a little bit less, a little less to live, but as you can see from what these drivers are making up there, it's nowhere close to what they're saying what's necessary to live comfortably. It's like I said, it's not saying you're going to be balling out of control, just basically to live comfortably, to keep your bills paid on time, to not stress, to pretty much live comfortably. Well, if you're single in Minneapolis or St. Paul, you need to make at least $90,000 a year to live comfortably. That's according to a new survey from Smart Asset, which also found a family of four needs a quarter of a million dollars every year to be comfortable. Now that survey took into account spending on essentials like food, housing and transportation and the money spent on hobbies and entertainment. Now what cracks me up is when they say hobbies and entertainment. Most of these 80 hour a week drivers, they ain't got no hobbies. They ain't got no form of entertainment and they still ain't making the amount of money required to live comfortably. Ain't that stupid? They're making about $2,000 a week gross. That's all they're making gross. Now when you start taking away how much they spend on fuel, how much they spend on repairs, how much they spend on just keeping a car running right, how much they spend on food while they're out and everything, nowhere close to making it. So working these 80 hours a week is not panning out looking like it's something lucrative nor is it sustainable. Ain't no way you're going to sustain that for long term. Oh, I'm going to do this for five years. I'm going to work 80 hours a week for the next five years. It ain't sustainable. Now, this, of course, sparked a big discussion all over social media, like what is considered comfortable and what's it cost to live comfortably outside the Twin City? $93,558. That is the salary a group called Smart Asset says just one person needs to make in Minneapolis to live comfortably. What's it take to be comfortable for one person in St. Paul? Well, they say, ah, oh, just $87,360. A lot of people are looking at those figures saying, dang, that is comfy cozy. Others have looked at it and said, yeah, it does take that much to be able to have a run of the mill, regular comfort zone level of life. Now, what you got to understand about some people's level of comfort is basically based on where they come from. I mean, I come from the hood. So my level of comfort is just making sure I got power, making sure I got food in the fridge, making sure, you know, my dog's got dog food. I got, you know, shoes. My shoes only cost like 30, 40 bucks a pair. I don't spend a lot on shoes. To me, that's comfortable. 
But then you got some people that's in the hood. They need a hundred and thirty dollar pair of shoes. They need a set of thirty inch rims on their car to be comfortable. They need shit like that. Comfort is always going to be a, a level of discussion for people. For me, I mean, I look at Netflix. I spend my money on Netflix and Spotify and YouTube Premium. So to me, that's what every month. I watch movies on that so I don't have to go spend money at movies and things. I could just watch it at home on my big old 65 inch TV that I got on a deal from somebody who was just getting rid of their TV because they was moving. I actually had the money. I was like, I'll buy your TV off of you. It's pretty comfortable. I couldn't afford to go to a store and buy it. So, and it was basically pretty new. So I bought it. But my point is people want to say that they're comfortable, but they always want more. You'll see somebody living in the hood, living ghetto as a motherfucker. Oh, I'm, I'm comfortable, man. I'm good. I'm good. Got a whole motherfucking bowl of ramen noodles in front of them. I'm good. I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing, man. I'm good. Putting hot dogs and eggs and shit in. It's like, to them, that might be comfortable. To you, it might not be. Comfortable to you might be, I want to be able to take my girl out for dinner at least once a week. We go on a date every week. We keep our relationship alive. We go on a date every week. We go to Red Lobster. That might be what keeps you comfortable. So everybody's comfort is a little different. For me, comfort has always been Anybody who knows me knows I'm a car guy. I got to have more than one car because I work on my cars and I need something to go to and from the store a lot. I use my cars a lot, so I got to have something in case it breaks down. I know I don't have to stress. I just order parts and use another car. I have always been that way. Some people, they don't want to say owning two cars is comfortable. I mean, I got a lot of insurance. I spend about four sixty a month on insurance alone. But it, as long as I'm making the money, I'm comfortable. I want to make enough to be able to pay my mortgage. I don't want to have two, three, four thousand dollars a month in rent. I only pay fifteen dollars a month for mortgage. I want to be comfortable. So everybody's level of comfort will be different. So for me, these numbers, like I said, when I was working corporate America, I was making a hundred thousand a year, seventy-five thousand a year, ninety-two thousand a year. So to me, that was comfortable to me. So being a hood kid, maybe making thirty-five, forty thousand dollars was comfortable because I was scrounging. But as you grow. You should grow as a person. You should aspire to say, I deserve a trip to, you know, the Caribbean to go see how they live over there. I want to take a trip to Portugal to see how they live over there. Maybe that's what your level of comfort has been because you don't want to scrounge at the bottom. Who wants to work their whole life just to work? I don't want to work my whole life just to work. We live on planet Earth. I want to see this place a little bit. I want to enjoy this place a little bit. And that's why I work. I want to be comfortable. And since neither Gordon nor I have the comforts of a no child at home budget life anymore, we decided to take a look into this. Yeah, with kids, a family of four, this survey says a couple would need to make $261,000 to be comfortable in the city of Minneapolis. When we posted this story on our website, well, it sparked a lot of discussion and a lot of reactions. I was kind of in shock a little bit because there's a lot of people in the city that don't make anything near that. When we asked Minneapolis residents how much it takes to live in Minneapolis. 90,000 seems like it's at that bare minimum. We got answers that were all over the place. I don't make that much and I feel like I live comfortably and do activities that I love and enjoy. More than 900 people answered our poll on X. Nearly half say 90K in Minneapolis seems about right. About a third say it depends on how you spend your money. My first gut reaction was, wow, that's pretty high. Grant Meyer from Trumix Advisor says it's important to understand how they got to that 90,000 number. The survey from Smart Asset used the MIT Living Wage Calculator to see how much you need just to survive in more than 100 major U.S. cities. For Minneapolis, that number is about $47,000. Remember, that number's not to live comfortably. 47,000 is just to survive. You're barely getting by. What's the bare minimum to cover housing, transportation, food? Meyer says the survey used that base number and followed a 50-30-20 rule, with bare necessities being 50% of your budget, 30% for entertainment and hobbies, and the remaining 20% for savings, investing, or to pay off your debt. The survey argues people who have enough money to follow that formula will not only have enough to live, but will also feel comfortable. The 50-30-20 rule that they use, it's a good starting point for a lot of people. Meyer says their logic makes sense, but after the bare necessities are paid for, does more money actually make you feel more comfortable? And there is a saying, more money, more problems, and it is not necessarily a false saying. Now, I beg to differ on the more money, more problems for everybody. I think more money, more problems come from people who in their brains live above their means. I mean, they've always been that way. Even when they had little money, they lived above their means. Now you get more money, you're going to live above a higher means. 
more money more problems is for the financially uneducated people if you give somebody who knows money well knows the utility of using this tool well they're going to do pretty well with more money they're not necessarily going to go nuts you see people winning a lottery what do they do they go nuts they were never smart to begin with they were just stupid with a little bit of money now they're stupid with a whole lot of money so more money more problems come from people who can be frugal even when i got money i still shop at the goodwill I love going to the Goodwill. I still work on my own cars. Even with, I don't be like, oh man, I'm gonna save some money. I'm just gonna go drop it off at the dealership. I got money, I'm good, I got money. I ain't like that. I know money is not forever, but money also is not for everybody. You start giving your money to the wrong people, investing your money into the wrong places, you gonna go broke and they gonna go broke. I choose to use my money for smart things. I know if I keep the Goodwill up and running, it's always gonna be closed there for me. If I keep buying stuff from expensive places, they might close down. I cook at home. I don't eat at restaurants. There's a reason why people that get a lot of money do better in life. They don't always have problems. Trust me, some people that got a lot of money still end up with the same problems. We have clients that earn a large amount of money and many people may look at their income and think, wow, they must have everything they want. They must have no money worries, no stress. They can do anything. But what's amazing is your expectations adjust to where you are in life. Meyer says chasing a number like $90,000, people do it all the time. They look at what their neighbors have, what their friends have, and they feel this desperate need to keep up. We're inundated with marketing that tells us what we should buy and what we need to be happy. And then we're flipping through our phones on social media and we see these influencers doing all these great things. But do you actually need those things to feel comfortable or happy? Instead of chasing a number, Meyer says think about the things that actually make you happy and chase that instead. Define what comfort means to you as a person. Look at the relationships in your life and the fulfillment you get from there because the money won't tell that or won't capture that. I think it's an illusion that happiness is money. Money isn't going to make things better. Now, that's a statement I can agree on. Money's not going to make things better. Sometimes money makes it worse. Because I remember when I first got to St. Louis, this is going to be a long story. I first got to St. Louis. No, it's not going to be that long. It'll be quick. <laughs> But a lot of people didn't mess with me when I was in Vegas. A lot of people didn't mess. For, I lived in Vegas for 15 years, never got bothered. The moment I touched down in St. Louis, everybody's like, oh, man, your cousin Jeff's retired. He gave up corporate finance. He's not in Vegas. He's here now. Do you know how many people were coming to me for money? People I had not talked to in 15 years. Hey, man, can you loan me 800? Man, my rent's gone. Man, hey, man, can you give me $2,000? I give you the title to this car right here. Man, that car don't even run. I mean, those were the kind of issues I was having because people knew I was done with corporate America and now I'm in St. Louis trying to do my own thing with my money. Everybody wanted a part of it. Money didn't make me happy at that point in time. And I was like, now I wish I would just stay where I was in Vegas. I wish I was broke so nobody would bother me. But what I did do was started doing what I love doing. I started working on cars. I opened up a mechanic shop. I started doing my own garage work. I met somebody who was down with working on cars with me. So we worked on cars together. That was my enjoyment. All the money wasn't making me happy. It was making me upset because everybody was in my face about it. What was making me happy was the fact that now I could go sit in junkyards all day. Nobody would bother me. I'm taking out engines. I'm taking out transmissions. I'm working on exhaust systems. I'm doing catalytic converters. I was actually having fun with my money for once. I was not in corporate America just watching it stack in my bank account the whole time, working 60, 70 hours a week, knowing I had no way to spend it because I was working the whole time. Now I was out in the world now. I'm in junkyards. I'm in auto parts stores. I'm in garages. I'm talking to people about cars and motorcycles. I'm adding parts to bikes all day. I was actually having fun with my money because my money was buying me the time to give me the freedom to do what I enjoyed with my life. So if you see that 90,000 number and you think, I don't make anything close to that. Am I doing something wrong? Will I ever feel comfortable? Well, it all depends on what comfort means to you. Grant tells me he has clients who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and many of them are still worried about money. So it's not the number that matters. It's how you feel about that number. If you feel it's enough, then it's enough and you can feel good about that. Yeah, past that point of living, you know, that living wage and, and, and then what you have left over. You know, the first thing I thought of when I saw this study, I, I just heard my dad in my head and just saying, don't do it, Jana, don't be a smart asset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do just laugh her off like that? Dude was like, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> he is wrong. Hey, lady, you need to get on him about that. Don't let him laugh you off. That was a good joke. It was a dry sense of humor, but I got it. Don't be a smart ass. <laughs>